This team is confirmed by Brenda, Rafa and Jose. We focused on the American community attitudes towards English Spanish speakers and how these attitudes affect the perception of bilinguals to their heritage language, which in this case is Spanish. So, uh, we created two research questions in order to uh, focus this research. So, the first one is, what are the attitudes of communities toward bilingual using their heritage language? And if there are such attitudes, then how these influence or affect bilingual English-Spanish thoughts and perceptions? To get results, we followed certain steps, such as selecting our participants, creating a questionnaire, analyzing the answers from this questionnaire, and then creating the interview and, and doing it. So, this is a case study because we focused on a specific situation that all of our participants share and we compared and contrasted the attitudes of their surroundings of the communities that surround them in order to start getting some answers that we would uh, analyze to get similarities and differences on the attitudes depending on each community where each participant lives To select our participants, we based on specific characteristics all they had to share, like being adults in their mid-twenties, so they would have clearer thoughts and perceptions uh, towards the topic we wanted to talk about. Um, if we would have chosen younger people, uh, they would have struggled on, on giving concrete answers, as they are still working on on their thoughts and their perceptions and we also uh, focused on people with Mexican parents uh, that migrated to the United States uh, before being born or, or as children so they would be part of the generation that still speaks and, and uses the, the, the language Spanish in in that country and they also needed to have a complete high education and they needed to live in the United States their entire lives so they would have more to talk about more more experiences to to tell us and yeah Another thing that we actually didn't want to, to do was to find people in the same place. So we try to find participants as far as possible from, from the other. So we could compare the situation that each of them live and, and how, how this context can, can affect them. So we have someone from California. Texas, Illinois, and and different other places, so we could have people uh, as far as possible, and we could compare each situation, each city, and see see how it goes. So I'm gonna talk a bit about the data collection. We used a semi-structured and an online synchronous interview to obtain reliable data for our case study. Now let's listen to some of the recordings of these interviews. Cesar from Illinois. Um, you know, growing up, my parents really wanted it to be a part of 
you know, me growing up. So it was really important for them, especially around family members, around other um, Spanish speakers that didn't speak English. It was really important for them that I would speak Spanish just because it felt not inclusive, you know, because I have a lot of relatives, for example, who don't speak Spanish, especially around family members. So like grandparents and stuff like that can't really hear them. So you kind of lose a generation's worth of connections with them. So they wanted it to be important just so I could communicate with people that couldn't learn English. Anna from California. I thought I live in the community. Um, I live in Grand Park, and it's mostly um, Caucasian. So whenever I go to a store and I hear someone speak Spanish, that's like in the cashier, I get happy and like I start speaking Spanish to them, just because like it gives me like a, like kind of like a feeling of like some there that's like the same as me kind of like uh how do I explain um Dario from Texas. I feel proud of it because most people around my age really don't speak Spanish that much. And most of the older generation does. And it's kind of good to be able to communicate with most people because most of the community is uh, speak Spanish despite being at places where Katya from Georgia. Of course I would. I mean, I feel like it's kind of, uh, it wouldn't make sense if I, if, if I know Spanish, it wouldn't make sense why my kid wouldn't know Spanish. So I would want them to, I would love to teach them in the process so he can be bilingual like me, you know, and he gets the best of both worlds. I don't, I don't feel uncomfortable, you know, teaching him or I don't, I'm confident enough in my Spanish that I could teach my kid Spanish. Okay. So um, I know that you have a child. Do yeah. you do this with him? Like I do. How, how, when do you speak Spanish to him at home, outside? Like, no? It's, um, I'd say at home and outside. I actually tend to speak more to him since I am living in the, in the U.S. And most people speak um, English. So he's going to learn English eventually. What I want him to get right now is Spanish. So it's easier when he grows up. And whenever I have to teach him like like the grammar rules or of Spanish and stuff, it's easier towards him and not so difficult. We proceeded to transcribing the interviews to analyze and determine patterns in attitudes of each community. Questionnaire's answers obtained supported our participants' characteristics criteria for selection. Although some of the questions did not give us further information, therefore we determined which questions from this questionnaire needed to be extended to obtain re the reliable data for this case study as mentioned before. Whereas the interview supported our research questions that there are attitudes towards the heritage language. Discussions and findings throughout the analysis of the participants' responses to both a questionnaire and an interview, 
The researchers observed that patterns emerge from the data. Researchers noticed that the viewpoint of the participants' parents play a role in the perceptions that they have towards Spanish. In the quest of this research, we also understood that the behavior of monolingual English speakers in colloquial and formal domains influence the attitudes of Mexican-American bilingual towards Spanish. The reactions of monolingual Spanish speakers and Spanish English bilingual community members also influence the participants' views of Spanish. The participants' own reactions toward Spanish used by other Spanish speakers was yet another salient point that emerged while analyzing the data, which revealed the participants' current attitudes toward Spanish. In general, parents' attitudes toward Spanish is positive and influenced favorably in the perception that Mexican-American bilinguals have toward their heritage language in American communities. Only one of the participants' parents had negative attitudes regarding Spanish as a drawback for professional development. Attitudes of monolingual English speakers it is noticeable in the participants' responses that monolingual English speakers rarely express negative spoken comments to the use of Spanish. They generally give mean stares instead. These aggressive stares could be important signals that monolingual English speakers are not, are not really receptive to the use of Spanish in their communities. They may not express their discontents toward Spanish speakers openly because they do not want to start confrontations and be regarded as racist. In formal domains, negative reactions toward Spanish were expressed by all of the participants. Negative attitudes are to be expected, since in some states in the United States, legal actions have been taken against Spanish and its users. Monolingual English speakers demonstrate positive reactions to Spanish in colloquial and informal domains only when they benefit from it. For example, when Mexican-American bilinguals serve as interpreters for them. Monolingual Spanish speakers tend to react unpleasantly when a Mexican-American is not able to speak Spanish. Since Mexican-Americans have Latino characteristics, all the Latinos may assume that they are proficient Spanish users. The attitude of bilingual Mexican-Americans toward Spanish was positive. Bilingual speakers may be encouraged to use more Spanish when they interact with other bilinguals, since they observe that it is accepted. Members of a community using their heritage language among them is an, is an optimistic sign that a language will prevail in future generations. Holmes and Wilson, 2017. Also, bilingual Mexican-Americans value having a code that they can use to show solidarity and belonging to an ethnic group. Also said by Holmes and Wilson, 2017. All the participants exhibited positive reactions toward Spanish as their heritage language. Based on the positive comments expressed by all the participants about the use of Spanish by other members of the community, we concluded that supporting Spanish use in American communities is a practice that has gained popularity among Latino communities. Conclusion. A solid cultural education on children may help to raise people with a strong mentality and a strong sense of identity. There is more acceptance of the use of Spanish in colloquial domains. However, Spanish speakers still refrain themselves from using Spanish in formal settings, since the attitudes of monolingual English speakers are somewhat negative. Latino communities are seen as a segregated minority group by the government, and little to no effort has been made to implement strategies to accept the use of Spanish in governmental settings. The attitudes towards Spanish were similar in the four communities that the participants represented. Limitations. 
the number of participants is a limitation. It is difficult to generalize our findings with such a limited number of participants. Also, social status, the participants were from a meat social economic background. Research that includes participants from higher or lower socioeconomic status may be necessary and could reveal interesting findings. English monolinguals. More research could be conducted to obtain monolingual English speakers' opinion and attitudes towards Spanish, because here we are only analyzing one side of the equation. Uh, online interviewing may limit the participants to express themselves. A face-to-face -face interview could be a better option to build rapport and trust with interviewees, therefore obtaining more valuable information. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of this presentation. We want to thank you for your attention. This project represented a lot of challenges, but we made it. Thank you very much. See you next time.